Most no-code voice AI agent platforms lock you in. You start quickly with their builder, but then when you need customization beyond a certain point, you have to swap platforms, throw away all of that work and rebuild from scratch. But did you know that you can build a production voice agent without writing any code? And when you need to customize or scale, you're not locked in. And when you need to, you can edit the code and even self-host. I'll give you one guess which platform lets you go from no code all the way to full code when you need to with no vendor lock-in. I'll give you a hint. It's LiveKit. In this tutorial, we're going to build a burger restaurant voice AI agent with no coding required. It's going to answer menu questions and take orders. We're going to use LiveKit Agent Builder, N8N, and Google Sheets to accomplish this. You'll be able to access this agent using a web UI or even call it using a free phone number. Oh yeah, by the way, have I mentioned yet that everything that you see in this video can be done for free? Like completely free. And yes, this is a scrappy way to build a no code voice agent, but it works. And even though you're, you're starting with no code, you're not locked in. If you want to swap out Google Sheets for a real database, do it. If you want to completely customize the back end, well, just hand it off to an engineering team. They can take it and run with it. This same agent evolves from prototype to production without rebuilding on a different platform. So to follow along, you're going to need a LiveKit Cloud account, N8N, and Google Sheets. Links to everything that you need are in the description. So we're going to use LiveKit as the brains and nervous system of the agent and N8N as the eyes to the data that we need to look at, which will be in Google Sheets. So first, let's build out our database. We're going to use Google Sheets as a very basic database. So in my sheet here, I have a menu page and an orders page. On the menu page, I have a table here uh, with items, description, ingredients, gluten-free options, price, and availability. Very basic. Uh, and I just went ahead and actually just used Gemini here to help me uh, create some, some fake data. And then under orders, uh, we've got just a basic table here with ID, timestamp, customer name, phone number, items, status, and total. So this is where the orders will then get recorded. All right, so now let's build out the N8N workflow that's going to read this data. Now there's a few ways to do this. We could use a webhook trigger, but in this case, we're actually going to use an MCP server trigger uh, because we're gonna give it many tools. And in this instance, the MCP server trigger is actually the cleaner option, easier option to go for. So you could build this out from scratch, or you could just use the link in the description. I already have this workflow built for you. You can just uh, use the URL and follow along with exactly what I do here. So I'm going to create a new workflow. And then in the three dots here, I'm going to import from URL. And then again, just use that URL that's in the video description and hit import. So let's walk through this. We have our MCP server trigger. And in here, we've got a test URL and a production URL. Um, keep track of this. We're going to use this in just a bit. Then we have several tools, get menu, get orders and take order, and then calculator. Let's look at get menu first. So in here, we're going to connect this to our Google Sheets. So uh, in here, the, the top drop down, go ahead and connect that to your Google Sheets account. If you don't have this set up, just click create new credentials and then uh, give it access to your Google account so that it can see your Google Sheets. So I'm going to go ahead and select mine and then we need to select the document. So click the drop down here and I'm going to select my restaurant database, Google Sheet. And then which list are we looking at? we are looking at the menu list. And we're not gonna filter anything out. We want to get the entire menu. So that's it for this one. Let's go back and we'll look at the get orders. It's gonna be very similar. So here again, make sure that you have selected your Google Sheets account and then select which uh, Google Sheet you want to get and then select which page. So that is going to be orders. And again, we want to get all of the orders. Let's move on now to take order. Take order is slightly different. So in the last two, let me go back to get menus. We were on uh, the operation was get rows in take orders. The operation is append row. So we're adding a row to the sheet. So again, make sure that you're connected to your Google Sheets account, select uh, which sheet, which is restaurant database for me. And then it is on the orders tab. Now it automatically pulled in all of the columns that it can see from that sheet. So it already automatically sees ID, timestamp, customer name, et cetera. Now we need to map these. So for ID, we're going to let the AI automatically figure out what to put there. 
Same for the customer name, the phone number, items, status, total, all of that. We're going to let the AI figure it out for us. The timestamp is the only one where we're going to actually enter an expression. So I said no code. I guess this is the tiny bit of little bit of code that you're going to enter here, but basically we're just going to tell it what to put here. And so what you're going to do is two curly brackets and then within there dollar now. And so that is just going to give it the timestamp of whatever time it is now, whenever that order gets entered, it's going to enter that timestamp into that field in our Google Sheets. Cool. So that is this one. And then the calculator is just a built in tool in N8N. And the reason that we want the calculator is because LLMs are just not good at math. I don't know why they're just not good at math. So we want to make sure that it actually uses a calculator to add up all of the items so that we are sure that we have a correct total in the end to give the customer. Now, here's the flow that we want to accomplish here. When the customer calls us on the phone uh, and they ask us for uh, details on our menu, well, then it's going to automatically call this get menu tool. It's going to get our menu so that the AI knows what what's on our menu. And then when the customer says, uh, can I order a cheeseburger and a French fries, then it will actually run the take order. But before it runs take order, it needs to look at orders because we want to fill in the next ID. So it's going to look at all of the existing orders and it's going to look at the last ID. It's going to find that the last one is one. So it's going to know that the next order ID should be two. So it calls get orders first to get the latest ID adds one to it, and then it calls take order to then record the entire order. Of course, using calculator to add up those totals. So that, that's all the tools here. And again, let's go back into the MCP server production URL. Go ahead and copy that. We're going to need that for the next part. Now be sure that you save this workflow and then set it as active. Now let's build out our actual agent. So we're gonna go over to LifeKit Cloud. Under agents, we're going to deploy a new agent and we're going to use the agent builder. Agent builder is the easiest way to build a voice AI agent. So first we've got several tabs up here under instructions. Let's go ahead and name it. It gives us a, a weird name at first, but let's just go ahead and name it. We're going to call it restaurant agent. It gives us a bit of a template to start with for our instructions, but we want some very custom instructions here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste some instructions here. So here are my instructions. You work at a restaurant answering questions about the menu and taking orders. You're busy and you don't have time for chit chat. Answer as briefly as possible. Okay, so that's the typical experience that you would expect at a fast food burger restaurant. We're going to define how it should talk. Plain text only, no formatting, emojis, or lists. So when the LLM responds with text, it doesn't necessarily know that it's responding vocally. And so sometimes they'll reply with some weird formatting, emojis, etc. So we just want plain text because we're going to then pass that to uh, text to speech. And we're just going to transform that into speech. So all in is text. And so then some other basic instructions, if yes or no works, just say that nothing else. One to three words whenever possible, only use more if someone specifically asks for details. Uh, spell out numbers and prices when you have them, uh, when you mention them. And then don't explain what you're doing. Sometimes LLMs will be uh, a little too verbose in what they are doing. I'm, I'm checking this and I'm, I'm looking at Google Sheets and pulling in this information. Well, we don't need to know all that. Just give us the information. And then for answering questions, we're going to tell it specifically to use our restaurant MCP servers get menu tool to get menu item details. All right, so we're going to define that in, a, in just a bit. Give them ingredients only when they ask. So again, don't give too much information. Just answer the question. Uh, if they say that they have allergies, tell them they need to talk to a manager. And, and if you don't know something, just say, I don't know. Here's our instructions for taking orders. Uh, when someone orders an item, add it to the order. Uh, after every item is added, try to upsell. So if they order just a burger, uh, say, would you like fries with that? You know? And then uh, keep asking after each item until they say no or they're done. So basically just keep saying anything else until they say they're done. Uh, once they have confirmed there's nothing else, ask for their name. And then uh, after they've given their name, ask for their phone number. And then before calling the calculator and the take order tools, say one sec. Uh, so calling these tools does take a little bit of time. So it could take one, two, three seconds for this to uh, go through. So we just want the agent to give an indication that it is doing something and it will be right back. So we're just going to say one sec. 
and then use the restaurant MCP servers calculator tool to add up all the totals of the costs and then call the restaurant MCP servers take order tool with all the required parameters. And then we've got those specs below. After it's recorded in the sheet, tell them the total, give them the order number, and then say your order will be ready for pickup soon. Awesome. So what not to do, no medical or legal advice, just food questions here. If they ask random questions, just say, do you want a burger? All right. So uh, here's some technical specs. We, we're kind of defining all of these tools here on what they do and uh, when to use them. And there's all four of those tools. And then here's an example call for the LLM to understand um, what is expected. All right, at the bottom here, we have uh, the option to have a welcome message. So obviously when you're calling somebody, you want them to say something first. So we are turning that on. We're going to allow the user to interrupt that greeting if they want to, um, but instead of greet the user and offer your assistance, we are going to say, uh, just answer by saying Burger Shack and then wait for a response. That's it, Burger Shack. Cool, so now let's look under models and voices. So here we have the option for the standard uh, STT LLM TTS pipeline or the real-time models. So we're gonna stick with the standard because this is tried and true, proven. So let's uh, look at our TTS options. We have many, many options here. We're going to stick with Cartesia Sonic 3. We can choose many different voices here as well. I think I'm gonna switch this up to Ariana. And then for the LLM, we have many to choose from there as well. I'm going to stick with uh, the GPT-4-1 Mini. And then for the speech-to-text, again, we have many to choose from. I'm going to stick with Assembly AI's Universal Streaming. Now, a really cool thing here is background audio. So you can choose between uh, different types of background audio that might be in the environment. All right, so the default is none, but we've got office, city, forest, and crowded room. So I can expect maybe at a... Um, fast food restaurant, it kind of sounds maybe like a crowded room. So we're going to add that background noise. Now under actions, this is where we can connect different tools. So we could connect a web hook under HTTP tools. Um, we could have different client tools. Um, but he, in this instance, we have an MCP server. So I'm going to click add MCP and let's name this. All right, so I'm going to name it restaurant MCP. And then we're going to paste that production URL that we got from N8N. And that's it. Let's go ahead and add server. And at this point, we can go ahead and test our agent. And we don't have to do anything crazy. We can just hit start call and it's going to run our agent and we can just try things out and tweak things as we go. All right, so we'll click start call. Burger Shack. Hey, what's on the menu? Classic cheeseburger, bacon BBQ burger, mushroom Swiss, spicy jalapeno burger, double smash burger, crispy chicken sandwich, veggie black bean burger, crispy freeze, All right. beer oh, bag. Can I order a classic cheeseburger? Added classic cheeseburger. Add fries or a drink. Yes, uh, let's, uh, let's add uh, french fries. Added crispy freeze. Anything else? Uh, that's it. Um, yeah, that's it. Name? Jesse. Phone number? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. One sec. <laughs> Total 1798. Order number two. Your order will be ready for pickup soon. Cool. Amazing. And now if we go over to our uh, database here right, we can see order number two uh, it was just ordered and and everything matches so now at this point to deploy this agent to the world all we have to do is click one button deploy agent and this just takes a minute so now our agent can be accessed on any website that we integrated into or we can set up a phone number and actually be able to call this agent so let's go over to advanced and then under telephony, we can buy a phone number. Now, again, I said everything in this uh, in this video is free. So every account comes with one free phone number. So if you see this dollar here, don't don't worry about that. One free phone number for every account. So let me go ahead and search and I'm going to search for my area code. And then I'm just going to pick uh, a number here and I'm going to hit buy, even though, again, this first phone number is free. Confirm purchase. And then I'm going to create a new dispatch rule. Basically what this does is it's going to tie the phone number to my agent. 
So I'm going to create a new dispatch rule and it automatically filled in everything for me. I don't need to do anything here. It's naming the rule and it's uh, assigning it to the phone number and the correct agent. So I'm going to hit create. And now we can call this phone number and talk to this agent. Let's give it a try. Uh, yeah. Hey, um, what kind of hamburgers do you have? Classic cheeseburger, bacon BBQ burger, mushroom Swiss, spicy jalapeno burger. Yeah, can I order a mushroom Swiss burger? Added mushroom Swiss. Want fries or a drink with that? Yeah, can I have uh, french fries and uh, a shake? Added fries and a shake. Anything else? That's it. Your name? Jesse. Your phone and number. Three, um, it's, I'm sorry, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. One sec. Total is 2497. Order number three. Your order will be ready for pickup soon. Amazing. So let's go over to our database. And there we go, 2497, order will be ready soon, Mushroom Swiss. So this works, you can customize it to your needs. And this just scratches the surface of what's possible using LiveKit for your voice AI agents. And you're not locked in. If you need custom logic, you can hire developers to extend this using uh, Python or TypeScript. And look right here, in the agent builder is your code. So like you can literally just download or copy this and use it. If you want to self-host this, do it. LifeKit goes from no code to full code without rebuilding. So go try to build one yourself. Links to sign up for LifeKit are in the description. And if this video was helpful, give it a like and subscribe for more like this.